All right, guys. Um, we'll give you guys a little background on me, uh, a little bit. Like you said, I like Coach said, I'm a I'm a graduate from 2005 from Kokomo. I've actually trained a couple guys in here already too. So um, I was a former Division One athlete. I played uh, baseball at the University of South Alabama. Um, it's top 25 baseball program in the country. Uh, all state in high school. You know, great athlete. Blah 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 blah. Um, Went and uh, blew my shoulder out before pro ball. Um, got a master's degree, master's degree in exercise science. Um, now I basically mentor, coach, develop athletes that want to play college athletics, play pro ball. Uh, baseball is my niche. I train all kinds of athletes, but baseball is what I'm known for. Um, I thought about what I was going to talk to you guys about today. I thought about a lot of things, and uh, I know that everybody comes in and talks to you guys. How many speakers have you guys had total this year? You will be our sixth, sixth or seventh speaker. Sixth or seventh speaker. So, well, first and foremost, I'm not like other guys that come up here and talk. <laughs> um, and Ryan knows this about me, but I talk the talk and I walk the walk. Anybody that knows that about me or knows me knows that's how I am. So everything I'm going to tell you guys, I thought about talking about adversity. You know, things I've gone through in life that helped me develop and make me a better athlete, better person, better man, better husband. But it's kind of hard to correlate adversity, especially in your guys' young lives. But here's the thing. It hasn't been, hasn't been very long in your life, but I'm sure everybody here has been through a lot of stuff. Everybody's here been through things that's been hard, trials and tribulations. So I was thinking, man, what can I talk to these guys about, these guys about that can really help them develop? So I'm going to talk to you guys today about confidence. And I'm going to talk about confidence not like you think I'm going to talk about. So... When it comes to confidence, everyone's like, oh man, rah, rah, believe in yourself. I'm not talking about believing in yourself and looking in the mirror and loving the person that you are. That's not what I'm going to talk about. And the confidence I'm going to talk about is something that correlates with discipline, work ethic. Same stuff you guys have already heard before. This is going to be completely different. I'm willing to bet this is going to be different. It's a little, little similarities to stuff you guys have heard before. But how many people feel like you're confident in your abilities? Raise your hand. Okay, now let me ask you a question. You face adversity in life. Something happens. Somebody tells you that you can't do something. Do you still have that same amount of confidence? Raise your hand. So only a couple people. Wavering. Now, when I say you have that same amount of confidence, do you question yourself? Somebody says you can't do something. You hit adversity in the road. Everybody here questions themselves, right? Now, the difference between people that are going to be successful in life, I'm a successful author, business owner, uh, I'm a successful D1 athlete, like I said, I mentioned. All that stuff means absolutely nothing without having true confidence I'm going to talk about today. Number one, what is confidence? I'm going to tell you what confidence is, and I'm going to tell you the two types. There's false confidence and there's true confidence. What I was getting at with here is about questioning yourself. False confidence is the type of person that talks the talk but doesn't walk the walk. Says a lot of things but doesn't do anything. You know, it's the guy, and everybody knows what I'm, exactly what I'm talking about when I start getting into this. It's the person that says, hey, I can do that, but doesn't put the work in to do it. Hey, I can be a team leader, but doesn't set the example every single day, day in and day out. Hey, I can do that, but I don't lift everybody around me up. Hey, you know what? You know, I, I, lift, I lift hard, I work hard, I work out hard, I do everything, I do my homework, I study every day, I show up every day, I'm on time, but they don't do it. That's false confidence. That's guys that speak but don't actually back up what they're saying. Now, what else is false confidence? False confident people, this is something you've already heard before. False confident people talk about goals. They talk about being committed. They talk about doing things. They say, you know what? I want to achieve. But in reality, they're just interested in it. They're interested when it's convenient for them. I'm interested in being a good teammate when it's convenient. I'm interested in being a great leader when it's convenient. That's false confidence. Here's the thing. Everybody here can do great things when things are going well. There's not one person in this room that can't do something great when things are going right. But the difference is, what are you going to do when somebody dies in your family? What are you going to do when you're tested with drugs? What are you going to do when you're surrounding yourself around people that aren't good people? And you might not be aware of that. Is the confidence in yourself that who you're going to be and being a good man, being a good athlete, being a good leader, 
teammate? Is that going to carry you through those hard times? Or are you going to let those false confident people bring you down with them? So let's talk about, I'm talking about false confidence. And in reality, what I'm basically saying, and I'm a little blunt here at times, I'm not going to curse or anything, but um, they're posers. They're fake. I can see right through them a lot. I had a hard childhood. I had a lot of hard things happen to me in life. Things I'm not going to talk about here today because I don't want to talk about it right now. But at the end of the day, you have a choice. So let's talk about what real confidence is. Real confidence is the person that, fight, that, that goes through adversity, goes through issues, has trouble at home. I don't know your guys' personal, personal lives, but I'm willing to bet that everybody here is going to go through stuff or is currently going through stuff that is hard at home or hard with friends, hard with families, whatever it is. I can mean, say or think of a dozen things off the top of my head that happened to me in life. Now, here's the thing. We all will doubt. We'll all have a question of doubt. But the true confident person says, screw that. I'm not going to doubt myself. I'm going to conquer through this. I, I'm in the process right now of trying to expand my business. I'm sitting there late at night, three, two or three in the morning, working and trying to figure things out and make things better. And I say, oh, how am I going to do this? Can I do this? As soon as that mindset comes across my head, I say, boom, stop. This is, I'm going to figure this out. I don't care how long it takes. The true confident person will do whatever it takes. They will find a way. I might not know right now, but I'm going to figure it out today. I'm going to figure it out tomorrow. Now, I'm sitting there talking about true confidence. You're like, well, how, how is this going to relate to me being a teammate? How is this going to relate to me being on the field? Here's the thing. You guys ever been around people that you really enjoy being around? That lifts you up? Make you feel good? That's true confident people. The people that bring everybody up around them. Now, there are certain people that put on a front, and you don't understand when you look in the mirror. When they look at the mirror at night, they're actually false confidence. So if you're sitting here telling me you're confident right now, and you're doing it in front of everybody else, but at the end of the night, you look in the mirror, and you're looking at the discipline and work ethic that you have, and you don't like what you look in the mirror, that's false confidence. So if there's any doubt in who you are as a person and your character and how hard you work, that's false confidence. But if you look at the mirror at the end of the night and you go, man, I put everything I put in today. I did everything I could to be a great teammate. I did everything I could to play as a team. I did everything I could to listen to the coach. I did everything I could to make myself better. You got confidence. And you can carry that. Here's the thing about athletes. This is what people don't know about athletes. You guys are all athletes. Your work ethic that you're developing right here can carry into every aspect of your life for the rest of your life. And it can make you successful, whatever you want. What do you want to be? Architect. What do you want to be? Doesn't matter. What are you interested in? Business. Business. What do you want to be? <clears throat> Who wants to play college athletics? True confidence, the discipline, and everything I want to get into here in a minute, because I'm just getting started right now. I got it's about five to ten minutes left, just FYI. Everything that you instill and everything I'm gonna teach you, this is something you can carry through the rest of your life. You want to be a better husband one day when you get married? You want to be a better son? Want to be a better person, better teammate. This is what true confidence is. People talk about confidence. Say, hey man, believe in yourself, man. You're awesome. Cool, bro. That doesn't mean that I believe in myself. It's actually putting in the work ethic and understanding how to build confidence. So you're like, okay, how do I build it? Well, I'm gonna tell you around this is the part you're not gonna like. There's four ways, non-negotiable, how you build true confidence. How you can look at yourself in the mirror every day and believe what you can do, you know, be a businessman, be an architect. You'll be successful no matter what. I, I, I'm a firm belief. If I wanted to play football, I would play Division One football. That's a fact. If I wanted to play another sport, I would have been Division One in another sport because I had the work ethic. I was super talented. I was strong. I was athletic. That's my, also my mindset. Now, I will rub people the wrong way with that mindset, but I'm never condescending toward other people. I want to lift myself up, but those true common people I was getting at, the people that you like being around, they lift people up, right? They make you feel good. That's true confident people. A person that's really confident in themselves will make everybody around them feel better. Make everyone around them feel more important. That true confident person is a leader on the field. So the false confident person adversely hits on the field. What does that person do? Is he shut down? How many people here are guilty of giving up? A lot of people, if not everybody. That's false confidence. And here's the thing, it's okay. I faltered. There's been times in my life when I was in high school and I looked at somebody and I said the wrong thing. Instead of lifting them up when they made a mistake, I said the wrong thing. 
that's part of growth. That's part of learning how to be truly confident. So well, how this is going to help you in today, you're going to lift each other up. And this is for the rest of your life. It's not just today, it's next week, next year, whatever you do. It's going to lift you up, you're going to look in the mirror. Confidence is a skill. You're not born with confidence. I, heard a, I read an article one time about parents and coaches are afraid to discipline because they're afraid they're going to hurt the egos. How many guys do not like being reprimanded or getting yelled at? How many guys don't like it? As soon as the coach yells at you. I would say majority of people. But I actually enjoyed it. The true confident person, as soon as they get a critic, bring that stuff. I get trolls on my social media every now and then, too, because I've got a YouTube channel and stuff like that. And I, I will listen to what somebody has to say. And then if it's worthwhile, if I think that I can take it and build my business, if I think I can take it and make myself better, I'll listen to it. And then I say, screw it, I'm done. I don't worry about it anymore. It motivates me to become better. I, lo I love critics. You want to know why? Because they're the ones that are keyboard warriors behind the keyboard that don't have any repercussions for their actions. And it just makes me better, makes me stronger. So, all right, so how, how do we build confidence? So, number one, I got four things written down today. This one's most important. Yeah, I, arguably, you can say they're all important. Number one is you got to do the little things. You have to be willing to do the little things every single day. If coach asks you to perform a certain drill, you do it. If you have to do homework, you have to turn in the next day, you do it. I want to tell you right now, everybody knows here, you do not have to be smart in school to be successful in life. How many millionaires do you guys know that did terrible in school? Probably a lot, right? A ton. <laughs> yeah, a ton. Here's the thing. I'm going to tell you right now, those people that did not do well in school, but they, 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 they were successful at what they did, and they were millionaires, they were obsessed. They were obsessed at being great at something. They did the little things. Day in and day out. You might not like doing homework, might not like doing it, might not like going to practice. If coach has you show up 15 minutes early to do something, but you know what it's instilling? Which this is again something you've already heard. It's instilling discipline. You're learning how to be disciplined day in and day out. You can't all of a sudden wait until college and learn discipline. If you're not, if you're not, if you're not doing the little things now, it ain't gonna happen in college. If you're not doing the little things in college, it ain't gonna happen the rest of your life. You can't just turn a switch on and change it. It's not gonna happen. The little things day in and day out will build your confidence. It's going to help teach you, one, to believe in yourself, but two, to build each other up. Number two, you have to be willing to outwork everyone around you. How many people consider themselves a hard worker? Okay. Now, those people that raise their hands, have you ever used the excuse of not doing something with homework? Oh, I had homework today, so I didn't do this. Oh, I had this today, so I didn't do this. Have you ever used an excuse at all? Because I hear excuses, I run a business, I work with teenagers all the time, I hear excuses all the time. I had this homework, I had this, I had that. Can it be the opposite? Hmm? Can it be the opposite, like, to the teacher? Be meaning what? I didn't do the homework because I had a game. You didn't do homework because you had a game? Well, I'm going to give you a little story then. <laughs> no, you can't. But okay. In college, I used to have 12-hour bus rides. Get back at 3, 4 in the morning, I had 8 a.m. class. But in the homework... You gotta find a way. You make time. If you care about your body, you care about your mind, you care about growth, you make time. That's outworking everybody else. Now here's the key. Here's the key. You outwork everybody around you, whether it's a practice. Now, collectively, here's the thing. When I say outwork, it's individual, but it's also as a team. If you guys show up and you put half effort into practice, you go to a game and a team's well prepared and they've been putting everything they can, they're playing well, they're meshing well together, they play off each other's strengths, they play off each other's weaknesses. They understand, hey, I gotta pick up for this guy right here. I gotta pick up for this guy right here. They've outworked you. So if you only have 75% of your team that has that mindset about working everybody, that 25% is going to bring you down. So you've gotta build those other guys up and say, hey, this is how we do things. That's part of creating a culture, creating an identity and chemistry. If two guys in here are cancers, they can bring the whole team down. Because they're not willing to outwork everybody else. And here's the thing, if you're willing to outwork everybody and they're not, you should be offended at that. Doesn't mean you need to mother F them or, or, or get in their face or anything like that. You've got to learn how to bring people up. Now, again, I've been pretty hard-nosed and I've done stuff like that. But you've got to learn how to work with people. How would you want to be approached? If you did something wrong, how would you want to be approached? <clears throat> You want them to approach you and say you, you should, should be doing this? Great, like, 
Yeah. That's the way I learned like not to like, deal with a bunch of like don't sugarcoat it for me. That's good. That's good, and that's how it should be. You guys should have a, a, a conversation with each other. How many guys? Who are the leaders in this room? Raise your hand. So the coach and obviously a couple of players, coaches and players. Do you hold everybody accountable in here? Do my best, dude. Do you ignore things and turn the other way when somebody doesn't do something at times? So you always will call somebody out if they do something wrong. Not if it's something that it's relatively like that it can actually get better. Let's yeah. say I know someone is having a bad day. Something really bad happened. Mm -hmm. I will probably wait a bit until I go and reach out, try to bring it up another way. That's good. That's but good. If, if it's something like he did wrong, I know he can do it better. Then I'll. There's no other way. I have to call him. Out. So basically, if you're seeing a lack of effort, you get on yeah, par. I'll get. If on you're him. seeing somebody that's struggling mentally, then you come up and approach yeah. him in a better way. That's good, and that's another way to look at it. See, that's learning how to read people. And that's part of that working everybody. Part of being a leader is. Somebody's having a bad day. You, instead of talking to him, you might put your arm around him. What's going on, bud? Just to open up the conversation. Right? Again, outworking everyone, that doesn't mean individually. That means as a team. So as you guys that rose your hand as team leaders, I'm going to tell you right now, being a team leader has a lot more. You can't be everybody's friend. It is what it is. You can't be everybody's friend. So again, you got to be willing to outwork everyone. But when you're a part of a team, it's we have to outwork. Because it doesn't matter how much you can carry or how much you can, you, you can help pick each other up. If you're not on the same page, it ain't going to work. I played on some of the most talented teams. and I was, my, Our most talented team, uh, my four years in college, we were a five-letter team. There was a bunch of me's, a bunch of selfish guys. Didn't care. Number three, and I know you guys have heard this before, and I can't, I, I'm, I'm 33 years old, I still do this. You write down goals, and you cross that crap off as soon as you achieve it. Every single time you write something down, you can't just have it in your head. It's a dream if it's in your head. You need to write it down, cross it out. I'm going to tell you right now, the sensation and the motivation and the discipline that you get for crossing things off that you wrote down is going to give you that confidence. If you wrote down 10 things today and you achieved them all, do you feel like you can do more tomorrow? You? Now, I challenge you guys. How many guys here actually write down things they want to achieve? So that's three, four. How many guys? How many guys have goals in here? Everybody, right? How many guys feel like that? Not everybody understands your goals. Understands what you want. Here's the thing: no, not everybody's gonna understand what you want. Nobody's gonna understand your vision. They can't be inside your head. But if you trust yourself and have that confidence in yourself. It doesn't matter if somebody says you can't do something or, hey, man, you're not being a good leader. How am I not being a good leader, right? You ask that question. They answer it and reply, you know what? There might be a little bit of truth to that. I need to fix that. I need to get better at that. Because at the end of the day, when I, if I have five things right here, and I've, I cross out things constantly, and I will use OneNote and write it down so it's on the computer, but writing it down on paper is a different animal, crossing stuff off doing things over and over and over. When you cross those things off, it builds you up. This is the last one right here, guys. This is, and arguably this one's the most important one. But you've got to be willing to learn from anything and everyone. And this is with everything in life. The guys that act like they have it all figured out, that's the false confident people. Those are the posers. If you, if somebody approaches you on this team and says, hey, you need to be doing this, He's calling you out, and you're not willing to listen. At least let him talk before you respond. You're not willing to learn. Is there anybody on this team that doesn't respect everybody here? You guys really respect everybody here, right? So if you respect everybody here, you need to be able to listen to them. And if you're not talking, you need to start talking. The easiest thing for you guys to do is to make sure you're hanging out outside of practice time, or at least staying after a little bit. That's how you guys develop as a team. That's how you develop as a family. That's how you develop as a boy. The guys that train with me, I call them LT squad, LT family. Because I want people to feel like they can come into them. I've talked to guys about drugs. I've talked to guys about you know, depression. I've talked to guys about a lot of stuff. And you want to have that mindset. You want to be able to lift guys up around you and have that same exact mindset. Because at the end of the day, 
if if I, if I sit here and I say, hey, you know what, I'm 33 years old, guys, you guys need to listen to everything I say, this is how you're going to be successful. I'm telling you right now, you will be successful from doing this stuff, but I don't have it all figured out. There's times that I approach young athletes and don't do the right thing. But you know what, I learned from that mistake. I learned from other coaches. I'm constantly trying to learn. Because here's the thing, how many people here are seniors? Are you the same person you are as a freshman? You were as a freshman? No. no. If you were, would you consider that a failure? Yes. Absolutely. Are you the same person you were two weeks ago? No. You need to have that mindset. If I'm not growing every single day, that's a failure. What's the point of not being trying to be the strongest version of yourself? If you're trying to be the strongest version of yourself, that's getting better every single day. But here's the key. If I'm the strongest version of myself and I'm doing things the right way, is that going to lift you up? If you're a better version of yourself and I see you being successful, is that going to lift me up? Absolutely. When I see people around me being successful, being confident, doing things, that's going to naturally lift my spirit up. The old adage of you are who you surround yourself with is 100% true. And a lot of this stuff you guys have heard before, but I'm going to tell you right now, I live this. This is me every day. This is who I am. Every single day. I've been through a lot in life. I've gotten a lot of fights growing up. i had a lot of stuff happen to me. Stuff I learned the hard way and stuff that I had a really great father to help me learn. But at the same time, if you didn't have all the answers, I had to figure things out myself. Just like in your own vision and in your own mind, not everybody's going to see what you're thinking. You might have the best of intentions, but piss somebody off. That's part of having an open form of communication and willing to learn and talk to each other. 90% of problems that people have it's because they're not willing to learn, AKA, there's no open communication. How many people have friends that they lose and it was something stupid? Issues in life. Handful of guys, right? I guarantee you a little bit more open form of communication and you're willing to talk to each other, it changes everything. So what I'm getting at, guys, is at the end of the day, if you want to become the best team you guys can be today, tomorrow, the best person you can be, the strongest version of yourself, you've got to ask that question. Am I doing these four things, non-negotiable four things? We're going to falter at times. But when you falter, do you give up, make excuses, and lie to yourself when you look in the mirror? Or you say, you know what, I'm going to figure this out. Because there's been things I've failed out a lot in life, and I've had to pick myself up and get after again. I was told by seven doctors when I was 18 years old, because I had five professional scouts here to watch me get drafted out of high school, I fractured three parts of my back. Uh, all those doctors told me I wasn't going to be able to play baseball again. I went on by four more years and would have played pro ball too. So you find your own truth, you build each other up, lift each other up, you learn what real confidence is versus false confidence. That real confidence is going to get you through life. It's also going to make you guys a better team. All right, guys, appreciate it.